Welcome to the Introduction to Proofs video on sets. My name is Professor Michael Pluyuk. This video will be an introduction to sets, and further videos will go into more detail. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to define basic terms about sets, define a set using set builder notation, distinguish between the empty set and the set containing the empty set, and prove that two sets are equal using the double subset technique. We have two pieces of motivation for this. The first one is related to the course, which is that sets and related concepts are a playground to experiment with proof techniques. So the course is all about um, proving things and sets are a very good place in order to practice that. So it gives us a chance to play around with sets uh, without too much extra mathematical baggage and notation and it allows us a place to practice those proof techniques. So that's the intrinsic reason why we care about it. And then outside of the course, sets are a fundamental way of encoding math. So we can encode lists, numbers, functions, and other related concepts, all from using sets as the basic building blocks. You might care about this if you're planning on learning about computer science because um, your computer codes a lot of objects using simpler objects. So for example, you might think about how are numbers actually stored inside your computer. Well, one way of doing that would be to store the basic objects as sets and then encode numbers from sets. Let's start with a definition in scare quotes because this isn't a formal definition. A set is an unordered collection of objects where repeats are not considered. Sometimes we call sets collections or families. Here are some examples. The set 1, 2, 5 is the same as the set 5, 2, 1, and it's the same as the set 1, 1, 2, 5. In the first part, we don't care about the order, and in the second part, we don't care about repeats. So all three of those sets really are just one set. The set x, y, z, the set Mike and Chun, and the natural numbers are all good examples of sets. And then the, the last one is the, maybe the most uh, strange, the set 17A, where A is itself a set. It's the set 01. So we're going to look into that in a little more detail. But a couple observations before we continue. The order doesn't matter in a set. So that's one of the main reasons how it's distinguished. A set is distinguished from a list. So in a list, the order matters. In a set, the, the order doesn't matter. Repeats also don't matter. So in a list, you might want to know that the first and second and third thing are all um, the same entry. But for sets, there's no such thing. Something's either in a set or it isn't. And then the one that's most confusing uh, to start with is that sets can contain objects of any type. So you can have sets with numbers in them, you can have sets with letters or words in them, and most confusingly, you can have sets whose objects are sets. So you can put sets inside of sets. I find that this is easier to understand if you think about lists. So you can have lists of lists, and you can even have lists of lists of lists. That's fine as well. Um, but somehow when we get to start thinking about sets instead of lists, it confuses a lot of people. The major uh, thing about sets is when things are elements and not elements. So because that shows up so often, we'll define it. If x is an object and a is a set, we say that x is in a if x is an element of or a member of a and we use this e with a bar through it to mean not an element of, or not in. Here are some examples. One is an element of the set 1, 2, 5, but three is not an element of the set 1, 2, 5. Minus one is an element of the integers, but minus one is not a natural number, so minus one is not an element of the naturals. And then the most confusingly, the set 01 
is an element of this set. It's this third thing right here. However, the thing that will maybe confuse some of you is that zero is not an element of this thing. How could it be? This set right here has three things, one, seven, and this set. Zero is not one of those three things. This hints at some of the confusion that can happen when you have sets inside of sets. One way to help clarify this for you is to think about the set as a box. So the, this box has three things in it, one, seven, and another box. So if you were to open your, your box, you'd see three things in it, two numbers and a box. You might then ask, is zero one of those three things? Well, it might be inside that box, but it's not the box itself. And that's what we're interested in. This takes some time to think about and we'll come back to it. Already we see that there can be some confusion about where things live. So as a convention, we tend to use uppercase letters for sets, so capital A, B, C, X, or Y. And we tend to use lowercase letters, lowercase A, B, C, X, Y, for elements. So the capital letters are sets, and the lower elements are the lower letters are for elements. This will help us read things at a glance and understand them. Another major definition uh, for sets is the idea of a subset. This is a kind of thing that you know intuitively, but we're going to define it formally. If you have two sets A and B, we say that A is a subset of B if and only if, for every X, if X is in A, then it's also in B. Another way of saying this is, if every element of A is also an element of B. Let's look at some examples. The set containing 1, 7 is a subset of the set containing 0, 1, 2, 3, and 7. How would we check this? Well, go through every element of A. So 1. Is 1 an element of the second thing? Yes, here it is. Now we move to the next one. Is 7 an element of this thing? Yes, it's this one right here. Other more sophisticated examples, the naturals are a subset of the integers. Every natural number is an integer. Every integer is a rational, and every rational is a real number. Some non-examples. Minus 1, 1 is not a subset of the naturals. Now here we need to be careful about quantifiers. To show that something is a subset, you need to show for all x some implication happens. But to show that something is not a subset, well, what's the negation of a for all statement? It's a there exists statement. So to show that this is not a subset, it's enough to point out, hey, minus one is in the set on the left, but it's not in the set on the right. To write this out explicitly, the negation of a subset of B is there exists, you keep the first one, and you negate the second one. So to show that you don't have a subset, you need to find an element that's in the first thing, but not in the second thing. Here are some basic lemmas about subsets. Uh, they're not particularly interesting, but they'll give you a chance to prove statements directly by definition unwinding. So you should try these. Another exercise that we're going to work on is how many elements does a set have? And we'll continue this in the next video.